and gentlemen, uh, last lesson for chapter 9.1. All right, this should be, well, I would say fast, but it's going to take me probably 15 minutes. Well, it's better take me 15 minutes because that's all I can record for. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about hypothesis testing. Now remember, uh, we talked about HO being the null, the HO, and the HA being the alternate. All right, well, now we're going to talk about what a significance level is. This is represented by the Greek symbol alpha. And it's kind of like uh, an infinity sign, just like erased on the one end, okay? Um, and uh, what alpha means is uh, it's the point at which we're going to draw our line and say, all right, I'm drawing a line. If it's on this side, I'm going to, you know, be okay with the null. But if it's on this side of that line, I'm going to say, ooh, the null is wrong. Okay? Remember, our correct terms would be reject or fail to reject the null. All right? We talked about that last time. So, um, the significance level is that line. All right? Sometimes we'll be above it, sometimes we'll be below it, but it's the line we draw. All right, so for instance, okay, a company has developed a new deluxe AAA battery that is supposed to last longer than regular AAA batteries. However, these new batteries are more expensive to produce, so the company would like to be convinced that they really do last longer. Based on user experience, the company knows that its regular AAA batteries last for 30 hours of continuous use on average. The company selects a simple random sample of 15 new batteries and use them continuously. All right, tell their Dane. What would be our hypothesis? Okay. Well, we are dealing with average, right? It says the company knows our average battery time. So we're going to say our null would be the mu is equal to what should we assume until proven otherwise. We're going to assume these new batteries last the same length. All right. Now my alternate, right, because it costs money, more money to make these new batteries. My alternate, I don't know why I wrote that for. I want to see if actually the mean length becomes greater than 30, right? I don't want to know if it's less than 30 because that's worthless to me. I want to make sure these batteries are more than 30 because if they are, then I will produce them. I'll, you know, it'll be more money out of my pocket, but I'll produce them because it'll last longer. Okay, clearly not. Uh, maybe, maybe they're Tesla batteries. I don't know. Okay, that would be my null. Where uh, mu is the mean lifetime of the new. All right. Now remember, this would be like stating the parameter. Okay. Look, they already stated it for you. Now, um, so here's a situation. I'm just going to draw a normal curve here. All right. We are going to assume. Oh my goodness, that looks horrible. Um, we're going to assume that the mean should be at 30. All right. Now, the p value is the percent we get. So we must have gotten, we must have gotten a result that was way up here. Meaning, how much area is above that point? We found out that the area above some kind of point, greater than, because that's what we were checking, we were checking greater than, is about 0 0.0276. So at this point, they had about a 2.76% uh, chance of getting anything of that score or higher. All right? We don't know what we actually got. We got some kind of result. And we'll get into this. Hopefully, you'll understand it a little bit better in 9.2 and 9.3. But this would be my p-value, all right, the percentage. Really, it's my z-score, guys. Okay. Now, is this enough information? Is this far enough removed from 30 to say, you know what? It's almost, you know, impossible to get this result from 30, right? Um, so it's got to, it's, these new batteries have to be better, right? If there's only a 2% chance of this event happening, if the average truly was 30, right? It's got to be. Well, here's the deal. All right. 
we're going to compare our p-values. So if we have a p, or not a p-value, our significance level, okay? If our significance level is set at 5%, that means we're drawing the line when there's 5% below, right? Here, all right. Now, basically meaning, hey, you know what? If there's a 6% chance of this event happening, it's still possible, right? If there's a 10% chance, it's still possible. But if it's 5% or under, this deal sucks, okay? I am, you know, I'm sorry. No, this is actually, this is actually a good thing, right? Okay, because we, we actually want to hire these new batteries to last longer. So, I would... Um, reject, sorry, I'm going to reject the null. Okay, now there's kind of a cool little phrase because some people kind of forget, oh shoot, is it, uh, you know, um, is it if it's low or if it's high do I reject it they can never remember so here is kind of a little jingle I want you guys to remember if the p-value is lower okay if, if the p-value is lower than that um, significance level so if the p-value is low the null must go if the p-value is high meaning higher than the significance level the null will fly, or we're going to accept, well, not accept it, we're going to fail to reject it, right? So let's, let's say that all together as a class. You ready? If the p-value is low, the null must go. But if the p-value is high, the null will fly. All right. Okay. And here, my p-value is lower than 5%, right? All right. Now, what if we made our cutoff value at 1%? So basically it means we have a 1% chance of error. Up here we have a 5% chance of error. Here we have a 1% chance of error. So that basically means I'm gonna take this thing and I'm gonna move it over to here where my cutoff value is only at 1%. Does that make sense? Now, in this case, my p-value is actually higher, right? And remember, if my p-value, which is at 2%, is higher than the significance value, if the p-value is high, the null will fly. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say fail, fail to reject the null. All right, so depending on where we set that level, all right, and we should set it before we do things. Say, all right, I, you know what? I'm going to reject it if it's 5% or less probability, okay? If it's, you know, that's usually where we go is 5%. Um, but if it was set at 5%, we would have rejected the null. If we set it at 1%, we would fail to reject the null. So it makes all the difference on where we put that line. Do we want it at 1%? Do we want it at 5%? Well, lucky for you, you don't get to make that decision often because it's written in story problems with where we're going to draw the line. Okay. Oh, last thing is a type 1 and a type 2 diabetes, I mean, um, errors. Type 1 error, type 2 error. All right. And I, hopefully I can tell my story because it's a great story. Great way to remember type 1 and type 2 error. Basically, we're just learning a bunch of really cool ways to remember things, right? If the p-value is low, the null must go. If the p-value is high, the null will fly. <laughs> okay? Um, otherwise, type 1 error. Type 1 error is basically we say, you know, I'm rejecting the null. It's actually true. Oh, no. That's an error, right? If I reject it and I say, you're lying, but he's actually telling the truth. That would make me feel really bad. Type 2 error is when we say, you know what, I'm going to fail to reject, or in other words, accept. We're going to accept the null, but it's actually false. So I say, okay, I believe you, but then actually you are a liar. Okay? These are the two types. People always get them confused. 
So I've got a little story that kind of helped me out. It may not help you out at all or not. So I don't know if you remember my brother. My brother Eric has a deviated septum. And he's the guy who put the girl's necklace through his nose out the other side um, for a talent show. I don't know if you remember that story for deviation. But um, so my brother met his wife. And his wife had kind of a weird rule. Okay, His wife had a rule. She said she would not date a guy unless he asked her out twice, right? So she had made up this whole plan. I am not going on a date unless he asks me twice. So if he asks me one time, I'm going to reject. But if I, if he asks me out a second time, then I know he really cares about me. Okay, don't be yelling at me. I didn't come up with it. So. Here's how I remember this, okay? I remember the story. Because <laughs> basically, what happens if you only ask one time? You are going to reject. You're going to get rejected, right? You only ask one time, you're going to get rejected, right? Okay, so you're going to reject. But you probably shouldn't have been rejected, all right? Um, and just think of all the eligible men she probably rejected. And then she got stuck with my brother with the talented nose. Boy, she lost out. Okay. Type 2, and here's how I remember it. All right. Type 2 means basically if you ask him twice. Okay, that's where I'm getting the 2, right? You would fail to reject or you wouldn't reject them. But you probably should have. All right. Uh, so basically, am I trying to say she should have rejected my brother? Um, you know, even though he asked twice, should she have rejected him? Yes. Yes, she should have rejected him. Okay. So I don't know if that story helps you or not, but type one means we reject, but we probably shouldn't have. A type two means we fail to reject it. But it's actually false. All right. So let's see if we can get one story, one more situation done. Potato chip producer and its main supplier agree that each shipment of potatoes must meet a certain quality. There needs to be about 8% of the truck that meets this quality. Otherwise, you know, if more than 8% of the truck has got blemishes, they're chucking the truck. All right. Basically, in synopsis, if you want to read the thing, pause it. All right. What hypothesis should we test? All right. So we're going to assume that the percentage is at about 8%. Now remember, this is actually 8% or lower. We're going to assume that it's a good truck, okay? So I know we said equals, but it's really 8% or lower. When am I going to test against it? Well, I want to know if P is actually higher than 8%, okay? If it's higher than 8%, I'm sending it home, all right? I'm burning the truck up, okay? There's a bunch of bad potatoes, and nobody hates bad potatoes. I mean, well, how hard is it to, uh, oh, it's so frustrating to get a potato that's just got a, a potato chip that's got a spot on it. Man, well, it should only happen less than 8% of the time. Describe a type 1 and a type 2 error in this setting. Now, remember, a type 1 means I reject, right? First time I reject, okay? So I would reject this meaning it's a bad truck, right? But I probably shouldn't have, right? That's a type one. A type two means I, and let me see if I can undo this. A type two means I fail to reject this. So that means basically I, I accept it. And that basically means I kept the potato ch potatoes for the potato chips, but I shouldn't have, right? And people are going to get bad potato chips. So sometimes you got to toss around which is actually a worse error, a type 1 or a type 2. Um, for instance, I don't know if you guys have seen The Holiday, but, um, you know, people uh, diagnosing cancer always face this, which is worse. To tell somebody they don't have cancer, but they actually do. Or to tell somebody they have cancer, but they actually don't. I don't know. Maybe that's a class discussion for you guys. What do you think is worse? Anyways, here is the official writing of a type 1, type 2. You can pause it. See you later.